want to make sure you stay in good conversation, you got to tune in to Coffee and Conversation with Colette. That's me. Thursday mornings from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on the only station, WHBR TV 33. See you soon. in conversation with Colette and I'm Colette you all know I do my curtsy and I know it's a little on the zigs this morning I'm just tired now I'm tired of being tired and we're gonna have the conversations because it has to change and I'm so happy that the station gives a disclaimer that the views and opinions are not representative of the station because you're right these are my views and opinions and I'm not trying to cause any problem but I promise you we're gonna have the conversations that we need to have to stop dealing with these symptoms and get down to the issues. So I'm gonna let Six come back on and conclude a minute of his conversation. I'm gonna to continue to go to the lines, okay? Thanks for your patience. Six, why don't you wrap up for us? Okay, so basically, I just want to understand that who you are, what you can do for yourself sure. and for your community is not on the phone. Okay. You can't find it in the phone. It's right before you. And maybe we may be a long time trying to get our people to see the value and the work with each other sure. that we start helping each other the way we're supposed to help each other. Sure. I tell my young people, you want to know how black folks look up on each other? Look at who knew. Look, look at Carl at that time and how those people sticking together. And how nobody messed over the queen. They all protected the queen because protect her means protect the money. Sure. Is that I would think we should not let this generation see the black unity that I grew up to. Okay. At least show it to them that's pitiful, that they throw it away, they don't see what we got to do. Now. But let's not let them pass without experiencing what we did when we were growing up. Okay. I appreciate your call yeah. always. Thank you so hey, much for your insight. You for Have an amazing day. Okay. All right. Maybe I mean, we can keep it next week. Absolutely. Absolutely. So everyone, and he's given his perspective. I'm going to keep going to the lines. I know I put a lot out there. I know a lot of you, my, my phone's blowing up. A lot of you don't really like what I have shared, but that is okay. If you have an opinion, you call in and we can talk about it. Thanks for your patience. Great morning to you. Caller, are you there? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks for asking. Good. Um, I want to talk about since this is Freestyle Friday. Okay. Um, the, the information you put out for us all is wonderful. Okay. It's always wonderful. It's always useful. I appreciate it. Okay. And I'm able to follow you just fine. Okay. But what I'm thinking about, uh, the long-term miseducated leap of this thing. Who okay. may not be able to at the level of perhaps less invest your money because they don't they don't deal in those circles and they don't know that you know to do that type of thing. I'm talking about keeping it basic because when I look around Beach Boy and when I first came here five years ago, I I cried when I saw these houses torn down this way. Okay, I just cried. <laughs> sure. I don't believe black people have uh, a post in that. Sure. Well, Kim, and now this, that I've been here, Kim. I know that uh, this whole thing was basically created. Okay. And it, it is, I don't want to be a top. But there should be no reason why all of these homes are here unoccupied. Right. You know sure. what I'm saying? Sure. Um, sure. 
this is the only thing I know where you can go give a thousand dollars and get a home. Yes. Yes. But what I do want to say is the way the game is played, because I'm educated, I'm here five years, I'm trying to get a home. Is that they keep you? They keep going up. I have been down to the Detroit Land Bank so many times, mm -hmm. and the last time I was down there, I kind of talked to Carla Great on how to get things done without a whole bunch of bureaucracy in play. Sure. But I mean, just think about the person who is not at that level yet. I mean, I'm. I'm <laughs> and, and no, and let me and let me just say. And Kim, and, and Kim, I get it. I understand yeah. where you're at. But let me just say this, like, in, a, in my opinion, I'll do sincerity. I believe we have to stop using that as an excuse for us as a people. We do what we want to do. We go where we want to go. We buy what we want to buy. We'll go and buy a Gucci purse for $1,000 and rent a house. We'll go and buy a $50,000 Cadillac and still rent a house. It's mm -hmm. what we put our value in. But then when we get mad when someone else doesn't give us something. This whole give me mentality, we have examples all day long. These are the same folks that you're talking about that the majority who watch Love and Hip Hop, Real Housewives. You see examples all day long. It's what we choose to do. And, and you're mm -hmm. absolutely right. And I get it. Some bureaucracy, remember, it's called bureaucracy. So, yeah, they mm -hmm. might create a challenge for you at the land bank. And they might create a challenge for you. But guess what? The treasurer is a whole different opportunity. They're different. Mm -hmm. We got to know if we are. We have to know that. We, if we have to know where to go. But guess what? If we don't at some point. So is that going to be our life story? Is that our life story that, okay, well, we no. don't know. We just, we don't know, no. but we know what we want to know. So if yeah. we want to know, if we want to own a house, let me just say, so when I first started buying my homes, I, I told everybody, mm -hmm. my girlfriend in New York, we were on the phone. It was 11 o'clock at night. She was looking, she's a big vice president and a partner of a independently owned Jewish PR firm. She was online about to buy a $2,500 Louis Vuitton purse. Okay. I was mm -hmm. online and I saw this house for, what would I pay? $2,000 for my first house. And she was like, no, there's no way. And I sent her the picture. It was 11 o'clock that night. I got in the car because I wanted to see what I found at $2,000. So you can buy a purse and I'm going to buy a house. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so it, you can't look. Guess what? It's, either, it's a difference for me between the haves and the half-nots. And we discussed it's about class. So we can keep having the conversations with us to do better if we want to because we do what we want to do. Start paying pay attention to the folks that you see out in the streets. And, and it's, yes. if, it, if it's just women, I can go by any woman in any scenario. She's going to have her eyelashes done. She's going to have her nails done. And she's going to have her hair done. No matter what the scenario is. If it's the first of the month, you just start paying attention. You're going to see a woman with her lashes done. That's what, $25. If you're going to get mm -hmm. your eyebrows done, that might be $20, okay? So that's what, $45 right there. You're going to get you a full set. That's $50. So you're already at $95. You're going to get your hair done. I mean, we pay for what we want to pay for. We, and, yeah, we, we and we, we know do. better. All I'm, saying, all I'm saying is that when you go down to these agencies, including the Wayne County Church, including sure. all these other programs that are out here who claim that they can help you. Sure. And then you keep getting roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. All of us aren't, I mean, and I'm not talking about the people who aren't speaking that. I'm talking about people who really want this. Sure. It's like all of us aren't strong enough, or some of us aren't strong enough, to rise above that and keep going, keep going. Because, like I said, I've been here almost five years. Almost, and I'm just, I'm just figuring it out. Well, guess because what? every time you try to go to these agencies, sure. they constantly put something up. Oh, no, you got to do this. You got to do this. We can't help you here. We can't help you there. Sure. Well, guess what? Then guess what, Kim? Then, then you don't yeah. go. Then you don't go there. Everybody called me. Oh, no. I, I tell everybody, right. I don't have a problem. Call me. Mm -hmm. I went and found my houses. Let me just tell you. Yeah. I found my houses. I did the research. 
I called because at that time I didn't have a real estate license. I used mm -hmm. to call my realtor and tell her, I want this house, call them up. This is what I want to offer for the house. She would come back and try to tell me some stuff. I'd already done the research. If you want a house and you need some help, call me. Mm -hmm. And hear me, there's always somebody to help you. Closed mouths don't get fed. So whatever it is, if you want a house, y'all holla at your girl. I can help you get a house. Whatever it looks like, there is somebody to help you if you're trying. And I get it. Those agencies I are supposed to be in place. And, and I know I owe you a conversation because you were kind enough to come and see me and present something to me. No, I, no, I, no, 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 because no, let's call it for what I it is. It. No, no, no. And that's okay because I uh, know to whom much is given, much is required. And so I have to right. take the time to get to you to be able to help you. But I'm well, telling us that at the wonderful. end of the day, I, you all, I get it. I just want us to know what it is that we're dealing with and to, right, not, right, right. to, and to not let that deter us. So like you said, so if I've tried to do it that way and I tried to do it this way, well, guess what? There's going to be another way to skin this cat. Whatever right, it looks right. like. Well, I just want to put that out there. Absolutely. And, we, and, absolutely. And, so, and guess what? And for those who want more, you know, it's a lot to be an entrepreneur. It's a lot to be an independent thinking person in America. It's not yeah. going to be easy. Mind you, I told you all, I was talking to a lady who has, who's part of this multi-level marketing thing, and she was just so discouraged. And I was like, well, lady, it, <laughs> you got to be an entrepreneur. If you can't be innovative in how you're doing this, then you, it's nothing but another job. So mm -hmm. some people don't want to think. They want people to tell them what to do, and you get a check for it. And that's fine. Well, I know one thing. I can thank you <laughs> Completely this information out here. Yeah. Because until I started looking at this show, I, I've been so educated by watching the show. I'm glad. You know what I'm saying? So I, so I thank you for the information. Absolutely. And have, have My a pleasure. wonderful day. My pleasure. You have an amazing day as well. I mean, everyone, she put it out there, and it's true. Absolutely. As long as we understand what it is and the bureaucracy that's uh, attached to it. You all remember that skit Eddie Murphy did on Saturday Night Live and he walked in and they're like, what is this? It was a big elephant or whatever. Like, what do you call it? They said they call it bureaucracy. So you can't get around. You can't do anything. I get it. But we shouldn't expect that it's going to be easy for us. That's all I'm saying across the board. We shouldn't expect that people are going to care about our communities the way we should care about them. We shouldn't expect that education is going to be what it is for us in urban communities compared to what it is in other communities. I know that you say, well, Colette, but that's America and it's supposed to be equal and fair. But America isn't equal and fair. That's the bait and switch that they bought us into, the brand of America and meeting this dream of who we're supposed to be when the truth is America was built on our backs. And we don't even know it. I had the pleasure at church to do, uh, to facilitate Black History Month, okay? And as I share with you, our history is great every day of the year, but for this international observance for these well, 28 days of Black History Month. And I was fortunate to be able to ask, I did a, a Jeopardy piece where I was, and I'm going to bring that, I'm going to start, we're going to start doing that here, of asking you some questions. And so many people afterwards said, Clet, I didn't even know. Like, I just didn't know. So, so much stuff we just don't know. And so if we don't know it about ourselves, if we can't know just what we've accomplished in these Americas, if we're so clear about just saying I'm an American and what we've accomplished in these Americas, what do you think we can do with any other establishment that had nothing to do with us, that wasn't created to benefit us, that wasn't created for us? What do you think we're going to do? We, can, we can't do anything with it. We can't. Maybe we're just too busy. Maybe we're just too used to being told what to do and being dogged out for a wage. And then we compare it. We complain that we're not getting a fair wage, but you won't do anything to help yourself because it means that it might be a fear. and It's the unknown and you don't want to put the work into it or you, you don't know. And then those of us who do know aren't willing to try to share to help bring each other up. Let me see. Let me go to the line. Thanks for your patience. Great morning to you. Call are you there? Good morning, Call. How are you today? Amazing. How are you? You know what I'm looking at you on TV. I'm looking at you, everything that you got on. And I'm saying to myself, I ask myself the question, did she buy, buy any of that stuff she's bringing from a black sport? And to me, it just seemed like it's a very scary thing to go out and I leave my house. Sure. I'm not going anywhere to a black business and buy anything. It's, it's so black. 
people out there selling any of the things I'm seeing you wear right now. Sure. And I'm saying to myself, if they all got up the following day, mm-hmm. and none of the grocery stores open in Detroit, none of the liquor stores open in Detroit, none of the gas stations open in Detroit, just for one day, mm-hmm. where would black people be? Mm-hmm. And to me, that's very scary. Sure. You, you see what I'm saying? Sure. So, and you were talking about earlier that we don't have this, we don't have that. All we need to do is start us an investment group. Call it. There's so many buildings out here, sir. and it would be something you will get. You get a monthly check. Sure. Yeah, sure. It's, it's not. It's something that we we are doing. It's not something that that person does alone. It's sure. something we're doing together. Sure. For example, suppose right now we all put up seven dollars a head for twelve months, and we went to strictly sportswear down there on Seven Mile Road. We say, man, we want to uh, expand this. Mm-hmm. And this investment, we get started and stuff, buy them a bigger bill. Sure. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And when we come on Channel 33 and we advertise, hey, you guys can invest in this. You guys can get a monthly check. You guys can pay your $7 bills a month. Every month you get a monthly check from uh, the business we expand down to seven miles, strictly sportswear. Sure. So you advertise in the business. Sure. The same way the NRA is advertising the selling of done. Sure. You know, I just to me, there's some sticking to the point. I'm not jumping to a different subject, but no, no, that's fine. These children are these children. What they want is the same sense of security that the people who are selling the guns had when they went to school. That's what they're asking for. Sure. All the congressmen and representatives up there in Congress, they didn't have to fear what these children have to fear today. So these children are asking for what they had. We want that. Sure. Whatever it takes to get us the way you were, we do were going to. Sure. We want that same sense of security. We sure. don't care how you do it, but that's what we want. Sure. Well, yeah. Well, you know and, stay, to get the next thing. and stay right there for a minute because I, I really I want to hit two topics that you gave. First of all, let me just let everyone know. Everything that I wear is designer and I buy it resale. Let me just, can I just tell you that? So this dress that I have, it is a Nine West dress. It retailed for $90. I paid $2 for it. My whole outfit retails at about $300, and I didn't pay more than $10 for it. Do I, and, I can, and I can stand up. I got some new stockings, the ones that cost $25. I paid $2 for them that have the designs. I got some Via Speaker shoes that retail at $130. I paid $10 for them. So, okay, my bad. The whole outfit wasn't more than $15, okay? But when I try to create those savings to people, I have a business. It's called Repeat Chick, high-end resale clothing. When I try to introduce that to us, guess who my clients are? They're people who don't look like me. Because the black women that I go to, and I bring the clothes to your house and set the stuff up in the comfort of your home because not everybody wants people to know that they buy gently used. And the majority of my stuff is new with tags. But black people don't want that. I want to go to the store, and I want to buy to pull the same dress and pay $90 for it versus buying it from you for $10. I can you mark know up something? A, let me just say, I can mark up a dress. I paid $2 for this dress. I mark it up five times and sell it to you for 10 and you still won't come and shop with me. So let me leave that. So that's the first one. Then to your point about uh, the gun piece. And haven't y'all noticed it's really interesting. All these dynamics with these guns and these atrocities that are happening in these outlier schools, these suburban communities, these majority groups, and now everyone is in an uproar, but we've had those kind of dynamics in urban communities all day long, every day, and twice on Sunday, and it's not a conversation. How many young people do you know who have to go through bullet-written and trauma to even get to school? Not less than have turf issues and dynamics in schools because when they closed down the education, especially the high schools, they didn't do a cultural immersion to understand which hood looked like what. And if we combine these schools and these kids have to go here, what those factors look like to make sure that they can mix in and be educated together. They didn't do that. You just put everybody in a space and then let them have at it and then think that education is going to be the common denominator. And then you want to sit and talk about, okay, these rights. Please, we're about to see a clip. It's all about lobbying and the money for the NRA about a gun. So now you talk about, okay, teachers need to have guns in schools. Now kids are wearing bulletproof backpacks that they charge $200 for. Are you serious? 
Like, I mean, call it for what it is, everybody. It's about their ability to have a conversation, to keep their position where it is so they can continue to make money and create fear. That's all it is, Colette, because uh, if their only solution for this problem is to put more guns out there, when you say arm the teachers, Yes. Now there's more guns in the area. What the students are trying to say is we're trying to get rid of the guns out of the area. Thank you. And your your solution for this problem is bring more guns into the area. Yes. But but, but when you when you listen to Trump in, in our age, what you're saying is you step you you you're trampling on my first amendment right. Right. You understand? The students don't even need to let them bring that into the conversation. This ain't about your right. <laughs> right. this, you know, this right. ain't about the First Amendment right. right. We'll even bring that up, and we won't bring it up. What we're asking for is a sense of security yeah. that you had when you was going to school. Now, whatever it takes to get back to that, that's what we're going to do. We don't want to hear nothing else. Thanks for my call. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And on his point, let me just add, there was an article that was presented out of Newfoundland, Pennsylvania. Worshippers clutching AR-15 rifles hold commitment ceremony. Did you get that? Crown-wearing worshippers clutching AR-15 rifle, rifles drank holy wine and exchanged or renewed wedding vows in a commitment area at the Pennsylvania Church on Wednesday, prompting the nearby school to clan cancel classes. With state police and a smothering of protesters standing watching outside the church, brides clad in white and grooms in dark suits brought dozens of unloaded AR-15s into World Peace and Unification Sanctuary for a religious event that doubled as an advertisement for the Second Amendment. Did you get that? Okay, so then you sit and try to figure out what that looks like. But then you have a disconnect there. Because you got those kids saying, okay, we want a fair and equal education, and you believe that those are the outliers, and at least they're getting the information to best equip them to go on and to be successful adults. But then you have urban communities who don't even have updated curriculums, don't have adequate class sizes, are missing resources, and have to deal with all the other shenanigans before you can even get to a book. But we're not having that conversation. I'm, we're going there. We got a clip I want to share. It's about five minutes. It's MSNBC. We're going to talk about, again, what this looks like. All the lines are lit. I'm going to get to you. Let's enjoy the clip. To avoid dealing with this until 2017, I'm not here to talk about plans to deal with this till 2017. Uh, I'm saying we've got a real problem, and I'm tired of Republicans and Democrats who either want Republicans who want to burn the place to the ground, and Democrats, with all due respect, who want to offer a plan that gets it through the ne their end of their second term of their presidency, and then screws me and my kids okay, when it's over. And until we okay. do that, we have to deal with the extraction that is at foot. It is the reason the financial markets are behaving the way they're behaving. That is a mathematical Mathematical fact. I, this is not some opinion. This is a mathematical fact. Tens of trillions of dollars are being extracted from the United States of America. Democrats aren't doing it. Republicans are not doing it. An entire integrated system, financial system, trading system, taxing system that was created by both parties over a period of two decades is at work on our entire country right now. And we're sitting here arguing about whether we should do the $4 trillion plan that kicks the can down the road for the president for 2017 or burn the place to the ground, both of which are reckless, irresponsible, and stupid. And the fact of the matter is, until we actually, and I don't, and I'm sorry to lose my no, temper, no, and get, no. but I tell you what, I've been coming on TV for three years doing this. And the fact of the matter is that there, there's a refusal on both the Democratic and the Republican side of the aisle to acknowledge the mathematical problem, which is that the United States of America is being extracted. It's being extracted through banking, it's being extracted through trade, and it's being extracted through taxation. And there's not a single politician that has stepped forward Susan to deal yeah, with this. But there's uh, only one right now. It, the the leader of the free world, whether you like it or not, the but, president of the United States is arguably one of the most powerful individuals we have out there. But and Susan, he's what you're president. saying is exactly the point that Dylan is making. It's no. not about one guy. It's about all no, of them. No, I actually disagree. I think Dylan's saying it is about one guy. It is about one guy. What is it about one guy? Because all I want him to do. I would, like him, him, to I would do. like him to go to the people of the United States of America and say, people of the United States of America, your Congress is bought. Your 
our Congress is incapable of making legislation on health care, banking, trade, or taxes, because if they do it, they will lose their political funding, and they won't do it. But I'm the President of the United States, and I won't have a country that is run by a bot Congress. So I'm not going to work with a bot Congress and try to be Mr. Big Guy, I'm working with the bot Congress. I'm going to abandon the bot Congress, like Teddy Roosevelt did, and I'm going to go to the people of the United States, and I'm going to say, you've got a bot Congress. And until we get rid of the bot Congress, which is Jimmy Williams' constant point, which is get the money out of politics, and until a president says that's the problem and says he's going to fix it, there is no policy that I can possibly see, no matter how brilliant your idea may be, or your idea, or my idea, or her idea, or your idea at home, is that idea will not happen as long as there is the capacity to basically fire a politician who disagrees with me by taking funding away from him. Is that a fair assessment? Money in politics is the root of all political evil. It is corruption at its worst. And until we step up and kick that out of the park, it's going to be the same system all and the only the president could do that. We're going to no, no, no. You guys. Congress has to do it too. The, the Congress has to do it too. But I'll tell you what. How bad does it have to get? How much money has to be extracted? Asking, how many I'm things have to be heard? The brass tax. Okay, physically, what do you do? For you go and give a speech. Right now. To, yeah, right now. Right now. You say. You say. And then what happens tomorrow? Tomorrow, what happens is you begin the process of actually investing in solving the problem. So how? I come out and I say, how I create an infrastructure bank with two percent blending immediately. There's that once I explain to people the problem, once I explain to you you have cancer, the re once you understand how screwed up your trade tax and banking policies are, believe me, you will have no issue when I incorporate an infrastructure bank that I fund with repatriated offshore money that I bring in and then use to create 2% direct lending to every business in America because when you realize that the banking system is fully corrupt and defrauding us, and I come out and say that, which is what I want my president to do, that, that at that exact moment I say, you know what, we got a screwed up situation here, people. You all know it, and now what? I'm going to admit it. And as a result, not only have I admitted it, but we're going to begin the process of solving it like grown-ups. They did it in World War II. They did it after the Civil War. They did it in Latin America with the Brady Bonds. We are not seeing it happen now. The panel stays uh, a, a little more emotional than I anticipated getting at work this afternoon, but what am I going to do? So did you get that? That's the emotion that we're sharing on today. And all the things that he's trying to ask the elected officials, the president to do, it's not going to happen because everyone is concerned about growing their wealth, their individual wealth. That's what this whole thing is about. So you're not going to sit up here and talk about how they're going to change a structure to finance. Everything is corrupt. And so, and I appreciate the last caller's comments about, again, everyone investing. But the truth is, we don't have a mentality that's going to support each other. Everyone knows Strictly Sportswear is black owned, but how many people support Strictly Sportswear? And I know some people say, oh, well, their jeans are $100 and they're this and they're that. Okay, that's fine. If that's what we wanted to buy. But the truth is they're black owned because you could go to any other place where the people don't look like you and the jeans could be $100 and you'll gladly pay for them. So maybe the idea is, guess what? We're going to get an investment group and we won't even tell you where we're investing the money. How's that? As long as it meets a return. Because the truth is, you invest your money, you give your money back to the bank, you let your money sit there, sit there on a small yield per year, and you don't know what they're doing with your money. So maybe the whole concept is that, okay, we're going to take this money, and maybe it's an outlier into investing into entities that you might know of, but it can't be a direct attach to it, because then if it looks like people of color, we can't support each other because we just won't do it. We, I believe we need to invest. It just has to be a different model. Because whatever it is, whatever it is, even if you go back to the Black Panther movement, hello, movie, didn't you see that they had different tribes, different people had an opinion, but at the end they all agreed that they needed it to be better. Why can't we do that? Why can't we all sit and say, oh, because we want to be concerned about who's going to lead. Who's going to lead is the problem. But we won't get out there and fight like they did. So you get out there and actually, remember, we talked about having a fight. So I'm going to fight you. It's not a gun. I'm not going to shoot you. I'm not going to do that. They agreed that we're going to have a physical battle. Whoever defeats the person physically, they are the head, they're the ruler, and that's what it is. And then you might have a disagreement, but you still buy in. We'll disagree, and we won't buy in, and we won't have a plan. Let me go to the line. Thanks for your patience. Great morning to you. Great amazing. Thanks. You're an amazing queen. You're not going to. I just want you to keep shining, Amen. keep teaching, Amen. and keep reaching. Because I love you, Queen. Because oh. it's all in the connection. Oh. It's a reason why they keep Americans going down. So they continue 
to keep their foot on your crowns and your treasures. Yeah. It's a wealth transferring uh, United States versus United States is a yes. separation. And they come in to steal, kill, and destroy in order to keep the control. Yes. So uh, the next step is that you do uh, surround yourself around conscious people who know how to invest, who know how to build, yes. and to uh, keep this corrupt mess yes. out of their uh, existence. Yes. Keep educating to liberate Yes. Because if you don't educate to liberate, you will continue to be in the circle in this pool of corruption that uses you like lot of rats yes. <laughs> to be the cause and effect for their profit. Yes. Thank you for taking my call. Thank, thank you so much you. for calling. I love you. I mean, and everyone, did you get what she said? And so, look, maybe sometimes we have to change how we do things. So if we want home ownership, guess what? Do you own the home that you live in right now? Okay. Do you own it? So maybe the goal is I need to own the property that I have right now. And if it is an issue of refinancing that home to be able to pull out some money to pay that debt off and then have extra money to then go buy another home, then you do that. And that's how you create your real estate portfolio. Because the truth is, if you go try to go to the land bank or to the treasurer and then you get a thousand dollar home, you're still going to have to put work into it. The, the truth is that the houses back in the day in 2008 when the crisis first hit us, you could get a house, my first house, I mean, I literally just, I, I chose to put a new roof on it. So you pay, what, $2,000 for the house. By the time I finished up a couple of things, I was in for like $9,000 for the house. Okay. Then the third house, it was perfect. All I had to do was go in, or I laid some new floor in the kitchen, and I did the piping. So they took out some of the copper, and then I did the plex in there, so that was it. And then vacuumed and painted, and there we go. So that might have been about maybe $2,000 at the most. But I'm just saying, so maybe the model has to be different. So you take that, then you buy something else, because everything is going to have to have an investment. So then you buy that. I mean, we just got to figure out a different way to try to get what we need. That's all. But you got to be clear about what you need. And you got to understand the situation that you're in, and you can't be discouraged by any means necessary to whom much is given. If God gives you an idea and it is in your spirit, you have to figure out, guess what? I'm going to figure this out. You can't tell me no. There is nothing that you're going to tell me that's going to stop me from accomplishing my goal. And it doesn't mean that it happens overnight. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. Let me, let me I just need to get that out. Because sometimes we think that because we got this idea that it's going to just be real easy. And it's just going to happen right like that. That's not how this happens, everyone. That's not how life happens. But you can be encouraged every day. It's just like in talking to six. When you wake up in the morning, it's your mindset. So I don't wake up with doom and gloom thoughts. I don't care what the weather is. Every day it's a beautiful day. It's beautiful. I create that in my mind. Every day the glass isn't half empty, it's half full. Every day is infinite possibilities. Every day I pray for the enlightenment to open up my mind to see things and to understand better. To listen to those, to see what the light of understanding so that I can give something back to somebody else. And then that will make me better. I'm telling you all, if you don't invest in your mind and how you think, nothing else will change. All these conversations that we have are just moot. Because it's how you think. As a man thinketh, so is he. And if you do not think, then shame on you. You better figure out how to think. Just work through it. Everything that they give isn't what it is. Or just say, you know what? What's the angle? Because everything has an angle. Take it with a grain of salt. Look at it for what it is. Deal in that truth. But so many times, people of color, we won't deal with our truths. We won't even talk about the truths of who we are in our families. You can't sit and majority of us talk to our grand. If you talk, you got parents and you talk to your parents, your parents won't even tell you about the truths of what happened to them growing up because they want to get away from that pain. And they don't realize that if you don't know, you're disconnected and you're lost. And heaven forbid, the majority of us can't even go two generations back to talk about what we went through. Hello? So if you don't even know from whence you've come, how do you begin to shape who you are? But we bought into this ideology that everything that they've given us is what's best for us. It's not. 
It's what they say. It's what they've given us. It's how they think. Let me go to the line, you guys. This is the kind of conversations we need to have. Thanks for your patience. Great morning to you. How are you doing today? Amazing. How are you? All right. Good. First, I'd like to give a shout out to TV 33. Yes. Comcast 91. Mm hmm. WHPR, Detroit mm -hmm. Highland Park. Yes. We we'll give a great shout out to Henry Tyler. Yes. Uh, RJ Watkins. Absolutely. Uh, Money Making Diva. Scary Men, the Wow. Yes. Uh, the Hair Doctor. Yes. Rest in Peace, Baby Hill. Yes. Let's we'll also give a shout out to Reverend Holly. And then, of course, Miss Coleg Ramsey. Yes. On my show. Having a great show. Thank you. Um, thank you for that last clip sure. that was called Political Panic. Sure. Because basically, uh, you're describing the climate of our government right now. Meaning, the leader of uh, the United States has no experience in the military, never had to vote, never even worked for the government before. This is the reason why we have the chaos that we have now. Hmm. Thank you for enlightening the people in the community that you have the power of choice. Sure. Meaning, you know, we all thought the people shot that Somerset, you know, going out to nowhere. Okay. He didn't you know that you were stopping the way you wanted to shop and can encourage people to save money in the process. Yeah. I really want to say thank you for bringing that up, Ms. Fuller, because it's something I want to mention to you. Okay. Back in the early 90s, uh, my mom, this is Lucky, okay. she used to work for the city, but she had her own business. Her own business that she was trying to sell clothes here okay. over in Africa because she had discovered that they don't manufacture clothes in Africa. Sure. In the in a lot of the country yes. that look like us. Yes. So since we live in a disposable society, we were buying clothes like blue, like we had a resale shop. Yes. We were able to bring their clothes in. We would buy it by the way, and then we would ship it over there. Yes. Now, we had a couple of tons of clothes. Do you want to know what stopped our business? What? Desert Storm. Uh, when Desert Storm happened, the first area in the world that stopped import-export to the United States was where? Okay. Africa. Do you know since this day, since yeah. Desert Storm, that door that was closed sure. is still closed? And the only way that door is open is from when actually Africans come and do commerce with here. But as far as the door, as far as Americans going over to Africa, just becoming business, that door is still slightly closed to Desert Storm. Well, let me just say and stay there for a minute because I have delved into the bulk sale is what you're talking about and I got two companies there's, there's one out of Atlanta that does bulk clothing um, that sends over to Africa and ships in the barges so I can put you in connection with them and then there's a company out of uh, Florida that does the same thing and both of those companies are black owned so I've done the research wow. because again you just made I, my day there I didn't know that that, that I was the only person in, the, in, man, in this part on. of the country didn't know anything about that. Come on. I keep trying it's to tell you. I'm going to let Miss Lucky know that there's somebody else out here that's not similarly think like her. Yeah, I keep trying to tell everybody there's more than one way to skin <laughs> a cat. So do you think that if I'm going to be in this environment, and I and seriously, and I tell everyone, my experiences started because every day I would come outside, not because I just think I'm just so grand, I'm just letting you all know. Every day someone would stop me and compliment me on something that I had on. Every day. And so I said, you know what, Colette, there must be something to this thing if everybody is stopping you and I purchase all my stuff resale. So that has to be something. Because, and my girlfriend was like, I thought you shopped at Saks. No, my, my brands are Saks, but I don't spend the Saks money. But anyway, and I said, so when people stopped supporting me that looked like me, I had to beg you and this, that, and the other, or whatever the case may be, I said, oh, no, Colette, I'm not going to get discouraged. Let me do some research and let me find out where markets are that resale and not even necessarily high end resale is valued and it's in Africa. So African countries, they come and buy in the bulk and they have their markets and people come and buy the jeans and buy all the T-shirts. That's when you see all these shows on Vice and the like. You see everybody in these American branded things. Those are all resale donated goods that then are sold in bulk over to Africa and then resold in the markets. Hello? But again, 
If you want to do something, you got to study and show yourself approved, everybody. It's not going to be easy. I'm not going to sit here and talk about something that I don't know. And so I tell you all the same thing. If you got a vision, it doesn't mean that it has to come to truth in this space. But you just keep working on it and you don't think that you're alone in it. There's always someone somewhere around this world that is doing what you want to do. I you so much. Sure. Sure. Bring that up. I just want to say uh, one or two things about the stuff because you went there today, okay? Yeah. You that's went what I'm there. I'm supposed to do. Okay? Especially when I found out in 2000, I think it's Miss Tim Williams, the, the spiritualist, okay? Like, okay. that was just a, a, a brand moment to me to know a spiritualist listening to you. That means anybody listening to you, and you make your message receivable for anybody. To listen to you. Sure. Listen to what you said that you brought you brought up my attention today. Okay. False prophets feed into your insecurity. Okay. Let me repeat that. Mm -hmm. False prophets feed into your insecurity. Okay. 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 You making people feel secure, whereas there's no need for them to listen to false prophets no more. Okay. Yeah, I, I pray. That. Okay. Yeah. Now, now this is the one that you've been bragging about yesterday. And yesterday, you just bragged about today. This is the reason why I bring it up. Okay. Is God doing your work or are you doing God's work? Yeah. Let me repeat that. Is God doing your work or are you doing God's work? I have to say that after that when I, once I bring your name up, okay? Sure. Thank Absolutely. you for putting all this work in for the hood, okay, dear? And look, it's for everyone. Thank you so much for doing what you do. I, I just thank everyone for being a part of the conversation. And whether you call in or you're watching, I appreciate it. Because at the end of the day, the truth is, it's really us. All of these conversations are just for us to have a better understanding. And it happens day to day, everyone. It's not this overnight thing. But you got to be committed to understanding what it is and not getting beat down by what it looks like. Because the truth is what things look like doesn't mean that's what they are. And so it's a true test to who you are. If you are, greater is he that is in me. And so if indeed, because we all were brought up with some kind of understanding of God. I didn't say the church. I didn't say doctrine, religious doctrine. I didn't say that. Majority of us as people of color in these Americas were brought up with an acknowledgement of God. And if you say you understand that, and if you say you are who you say, then no matter what it looks like, you're going to see a light in it. It doesn't mean that's what it is. You don't get determined and deterred by what someone tells you. If it is for your life, you're going to do it. I tell you all, all the time, I can't use a better example than what happened with me and my family. You all know, I tell you, my dad was hurt when I was two. He was a city of Detroit police officer. For 32 years, he was not receiving disability. My joker was getting $100 a month, didn't have benefits. When I came of age and was able to work and finish school, I was blessed to be in a, be in a position to be able to take care of my family. Do you hear me? And in 2009, when everybody told me it wasn't possible, we got retroactive 32 years. There were attorneys that came to me. I told y'all, Colette, we don't see how you did it. We don't understand how it was done. Because I wasn't going to let you all determine what my fate for my family looked like. It was God in me, but I did the work. I cited the cases. I you did know, the history. You know, you know. I found out what you all were supposed to do for us. See, that's the problem. We sit and get all caught up with people, and then we get mad at holding them accountable, but we don't even know what to hold them accountable for. You got to do your work. You got to put in the work. It won't happen unless you put in the work. And then where faith comes in, if you say that's who you are and you ask it in God's name, he'll do it. So that's why I tell y'all, you can't tell me it can't be done. I am living witness. My family you is are walking on the page, in my dear. favor. Your relationship with that. God is personal. It's you just personal said it. with me. God loves you. never stop. Man, it's you personal. I tell you, good this is grow good plan for me. And proper care. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I get it. If y'all can't take it from me, I tell you all. I'm not going to tell you something that I haven't experienced or what I know to be true for me. 
no matter what it is. Can you imagine what it's like when you're dealing and your dad won't even tell you that he doesn't feel well? Your dad won't even tell you if he has blood in his stool because he doesn't want you to pay for him to go to the doctor because he doesn't have health care. Can you imagine that? And you're working trying to figure it out and you're calling down to the city and you're asking them why doesn't he have health care? And they say, well, Colette, he, he has to prove that he had an injury. He was a police officer for the city of Detroit. How does he not have health care? How does that work? And you said you think you're going to tell me that he's, he's not afforded that? The devil is a lie. That's not how this works. If you don't stand up for anything, you'll fall for everything. You guys, you got to know. Oh, love you. Thank you. You got to know what you are walking into and what your rights are and fight for it. It took us 32 years. Did you hear what I said? 32. 32 years. But it's wow. done. 32 years. You hear me? So no matter what it is you're going through right now, I just give that to you. I give you the encouragement to know that you can accomplish anything. I give you a voice and letting you know that you are not alone. That when everything looks like it's, uh, it, ain't, it ain't never what it seems, you guys. So all this stuff, all, it's all the bait and switch, you all. Don't walk into it. Don't let that cloud your spirit. It will take away from you. Don't let that happen. Don't. You better fight for your mind. You better fight for your spirit. You better fight to stay whole and be committed when no one else even understands it. The doors will be open to you. You just got to put in the work and know that you have support. I support you. I am here for you. Whatever I can do, whatever resource I can find, Whatever call I can make, I will do it. There, for the most part, isn't anything that you can tell me that I won't say that you can't do. You all know when we used to sit and talk with the son of man, I told the son of man, everyone got mad at me. Well, Colette, how you going? You just buying into the son of man, and he says that he's God. Guess what? Son of man, if you believe you God, and I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> Come on. God, God is in all of us. Okay? That's what this is about. Thank you so much. Meet, meet us where we are. I'm going to meet you where you are. And when we can meet each other in the sincerity of our truth and the idea that we can be better because of each other and for each other, then we can excel. Then we can go on to say, you know what? I looked at it this way. I didn't look at it that way. Let me help shape the conversation because it will make us all better, everybody. That's what it is. I hope that over these last two hours, that's what you got. I hope that we started off with letting everybody know we our pa bags came were packed. We came back for Wakanda. We had the great imagery and the engagement and the excitement of having that visual. And now where do we go from here? I implore us all to dig deeper, to understand the society in which we're in, to understand that wealth, personal wealth, and that will begin when we address where we are individually because we will need those monies and those means to excel in our goals and visions. And that's what it's about. And whether we can do them collectively or independently, but begin to come up with a plan and an ideology that will make it better for you. And then know that no thank matter you, you, what it you, looks you, like you, and other people don't have to agree to it, it is yours. It was a gift for you and you can accomplish it. And I'm here to help facilitate that for you, those conversations for you. So I thank you. And Amal, thank you so much. Please, I'll give you a minute to wrap up, and then we got to go. Because Ms. Perryman's in the building, and you know she's going to give an amazing conversation. So please, your last thoughts. Well, uh, Ms. Coleman. Yes. The way we can solve all these shootings yeah. in these schools, mandate of every parent to be in the school at least two hours out the month. Okay. Watch what happens. If you have to mandate that men have to pay child support, if there's a mandate that women who, 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 who receive public funding okay. uh, have to punch in the clock, sure. if right now if you break certain laws and you can be put behind bars, if you break certain laws on the, on the street sure. and the police officers can pull you over and give you a ticket, sure. if they mandate that every parent spend two hours at the school okay. in the month, Okay. You wouldn't have no more of them shoot. Sure. Because at the end of the day, the parents that go to school are 
If they were to see somebody to come up to the school to log on, they'll be shooting. Sure, I got it. I appreciate it. And I'll do one better. Let me add to it. Maybe the bigger issue is that we mandate that the parents spend two hours with their children every day. Why don't we do that? Can you just spend two hours talking to your child? Can you spend two hours without you having your phone and They're your child and your no child way. having their phone the and day. then you just sit down? Hold on one second. Hold, hold, hold on. And that you mandate that everybody put their phones down and that we can have a conversation to address what the real issues are, what your concerns are, what the desires of your heart is, what it is that you have challenges with. Maybe we can do that. And then that begins us moving in a space where folks don't feel that they have to lash out and be able to go by other means to be heard because that's what this whole thing is about. So, hey, Ma, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'm wrapping up, everyone. Our time is up. I always want to be a steward to the time and the cause. So I pray today that you were educated, enlightened, and empowered. I pray that you got something that will give you the fuel to continue your day and to work into the rest of your weekend until we meet again on next Thursday. So make it amazing. Thanks for your time. with Colette, that's me, Thursday mornings from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on the only station, WHBR TV 33. See you soon.